Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. But never duplicate. Duplicate. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Today I'm back working on a Music Man and just uh, finishing up with the sanding before I do the buffing and polishing on this thing. So I got everything pretty much sanded down the way I want it. And uh, I just have to go over it with some 3000 grit sandpaper to make it a lot easier for the buffer to do its job. So what I end up doing is if you've noticed in the past videos of this, I'm going to be doing the pour on it with the epoxy resin. It's been coming out pretty nice and flat. Uh, haven't had any, really any issues or any problems with, um, you know, bubbles or anything else coming through here. Because what I've been doing with it now is instead of just hitting it one time with the torch, I'll wait, you know, probably like three or four minutes, hit it again with the torch. And then again, the, like I said before, that brings up some of the bubbles that are close to the surface of the body up to the top of the epoxy and it just helps prevent having any like little dots or issues of uh, you know, problems after sand and re epoxy again so I got some 3000 grit sandpaper I started off with 1500 grit block sanding then it went to 2000 and then it went to 2500 now I'm going with the 3000. As you can see, it already has somewhat of a, a sheen, almost a reflection to it. The 3000 grit sandpaper is just going to give it that much more and end up making it a whole lot easier to buff out. Get that real nice shine. The top of this thing and the back of it is nice and flat. Um, right now I'm using my hand in a circular motion, not like this. Because again, even though this is 3000 grit sandpaper and there's not really that much of a grit to it, and you sand like this, you get the, your project in the light. Depending on how long you were sitting in one spot, you're going to start seeing a little bit of a wave where each finger was putting pressure on that sandpaper. I've seen people do this before, and it's like, no, 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 no. That's not how you sand things. You can't do it that way. If this was a, say, the side of a fender of a car or the hood of a car, if the light hits it a certain way, you're going to end up seeing waves from your fingers. And that's not how you do things, especially when you're doing painting and stuff. You don't want to have that. Uh, don't want to have that because it's going to make it look like it was just done cheaply. So I've already went over this a couple of times. Let it dry, I'm gonna wipe it down, let it dry, and then go over it a couple more times. And just keep going over it. You wanna have that nice smooth finish. Again, you don't wanna have any type of uh, uh, scratching from the uh, sandpaper, you know, from the other sandpapers left in your finish because that will show up when you do your buffing, you'll see those scratches in the light. Also, when you, you sand really good, um, again, you know, the, the buffing doesn't have to do a lot of work to get that polish to come out really nice to a shine, but you don't want to see haziness or, or, or gray areas or, you know, little scratch marks. You don't want to see any of that shit when you uh, end up doing buffing because that just shows that you didn't finish the sanding. Now I already got the holes drilled out for uh, the pickups. I got the dr holes drilled out for the cavity going to the uh, tremolo springs for the ground wire. I got the holes started for the, uh, I'm going to put a three-way switch on here and I'm going to put two of the uh, push-pull pots on here because this thing is also, uh, from what it looks like, whoever wired this thing also had it to where it split the pickups. So I'm going to end up doing that again. So I have like the um, the neck here and the bridge here. So it follows the pattern with the that follows the pattern of where the pickup placement is. So I tell you, when this thing looks wet, it's got like a real nice shine to it. I 
and this 3000 grit sandpaper is really not cutting too much. It's actually just polishing. But even though it is a very, very minute grit, I'm still not sitting in one spot too long. I'm still moving it constantly around the whole surface. Got a nice clean, dry microfiber cloth. Go around and just wipe off the water. Another thing that I like to do is keep a can of compressed air, lightly blow it on the surface, and that dries it even faster. See, I'm starting to get a reflection from the lights. You can actually see the dots from the lights and everything on here from the LEDs. And that's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the sides. Do the same thing. Putting the foam inside of the uh, control cavity the way I did, and after draw the epoxy and just drilling it out, left me with a perfect hole. Not filling up the control cavity with uh, a bunch of unwanted, unwanted epoxy resins. Now again, I've already sanded this thing, went over this thing quite a few times with the 3000 grit sandpaper. This is kind of like just a uh, Kind of like a finish rub, if you want to say it. This is the one that gives you the happy the, end, the happy ending. But a bump bump. So I got the neck, screws, the mounts, already drilled out. I also did a thing where I'm going to re-drill. Like there's what is this, five screws for the uh, five screws for the neck mount, and I've already capped off three of those holes because uh, I'm going to re-drill them. So it's got fresh fresh threads because I noticed that a couple of them were a little bit on the loose side, like they're a little bit stripped out. No seam going down the sides, it's all nice and flat. This is why I like to do block sanding. Although with this type of sandpaper that I'm using right now, it's like a rubber pad. It really doesn't matter if you block sand it or not. It's not really cutting. Like I said, it's mostly polishing the surface. This thing came out really good. I'm really, really happy the way this thing came out. A lot of fun with uh, working on it. The nice thing about doing this with the epoxy resin is it's a great restorer. All right, you end up kind of like the Wally in a Box's Kramer. You know that there was a particle board guitar body that was kind of rotten out. It was starting to rot itself out and fall apart, and the epoxy resin just like protects it and builds it up to where it'll actually stay. You should have that guitar for a very, very long time without any problems with the body or anything else. Now when I do the epoxy resin on, on guitar bodies, I kind of like seal up the body pretty much everywhere, exception of where the holes are for drilling. All the surfaces are nice and flat. The edges are nice and rounded the way they're supposed to. This area here, you can kind of see where the two where it meets. It's got a little bit of a roundness to it, but not still has that sharpness to it. Like when I'm doing the sanding like this over here, I'm not going like this. I'm going like this. Now when I go around the sides, I'm not going like this, I'm going like this with my finger bent over around the corner, around the edge. If your arm gets tired or whatever, just switch hands.
I've already made the cover plate for this. That's over here. Already drilled out, ready to go. Got its plexiglass. should be enough of this. I've been going at it for quite a while with the sanding. I'm going to have a lot of cleaning up to do as far as all the areas of uh, like little corners and stuff like that. All the cracks Scratches, cracks. I think there was a big crack over here. That's gone. Now I need to change out this. Change out this towel over here because it's kind of damp, and I don't want to use a wet towel. Move stuff out of the way. This towel is wet too, and I don't want to use that. I need a nice dry one, so I'll put this off to the side. Get rid of this, because it's wet. Nice clean towel. Got a different color this time. Now I'm going to put my sandpapers away. I'm not going to be using any of that. Shake the rubbing helm all really good. It doesn't really matter what side I start on. I got my buffing wheel already attached, nice and tight. Microfiber cloth. Two off to the side. Put my glasses. Now I'm going to start making some noise and sling some rubbing compound around. Rub this in a little bit.
Now this will be buffed a few times. See the black is black. Still needs to be buffed out a few times, but yep, there you go. Now there used to be a hole right here, and that hole right there was where they hung the body. It's still on the other side, but it's plugged on this side. Switch pads to see if it gets a little bit better of a result. Oh yeah, I like that pad better, much better. You know, when I was growing up, we had the cotton pads for doing, um, or the wool, whatever you want to call it, for doing buffing. We didn't have these foam ones. And they started off as a flat foam, and then they started doing the um, egg crate foam. These work good if they're on a large, larger pad. 
a smaller pad, I've noticed that they don't work as good as the bigger ones do. So kind of switch over to back and forth with the honeycomb, or not honeycomb, but the eggshell, egg crate, whatever you want to call it, uh, pads to the flat ones. I kind of like the flat ones a lot better, at least for smaller projects. is starting to pop out really good on this thing. So I'm going to hit this a couple of times with the buffer, with the rubbing compound, and then I'll start switching off to a, uh, what they call a machine polish, which is a lighter, much lighter grit in the liquid as far as the cutting cream that's inside of the compound and that'll give me a nicer start bringing this out more and more and more so you can kind of see that this is uh, working out pretty good it's got a nice not deep black and again this may have a little bit of a blue tint to it a dark blue tint to it when it's in some light so yeah all right so what I'm using right now is I picked up some of these ultra compound uh, made by McGuire's. I've used McGuire's products before. Uh, I even use the the wax. It's made by McGuire's, which is the uh, ceramic. And I used to use this shit called um, uh, something tech. I think it was called high tech or something like that, which would work really, really good as well. If I had some black ebony liquid and I did the final buff with that. Oh my God, would this thing come out really nice, but can't find black ebony anymore. So I just have to suffer with this. So it's working out pretty good. Still can't go on to the next stages. I'm gonna go over this a couple more times with the, uh, hard, the harder cutting cream rubbing compound, and then, uh, yeah, off to the sides and front. Alright, so now for the side that really counts. 
and get my rubbing compound pad, buffing pad. There's some rubbing compound on here. Push it in a little bit. Let's start polishing this thing up. This is only the first buffing of this, so it's going to need a few more than just one. Oh yeah, it's starting to pop now. She's starting to pop now. A few more times and go into the next compounds. <laughs> 